Hello friends, today we will be doing Kangaroo Maths Year 2022, Level 5 and 6 for the Benjamin level. Uh, we'll do question number 1 to 10 in this video and uh, 10 to 20 in the other video and so on. So let's start with the first question. Six points are numbered as shown. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Kirsten draws two triangles, one by joining the even numbered points and one by joining the odd numbered points and colors the inside of one of the triangles red and the inside of the other triangle green. Uh, which of the five options shows the picture Kirsten draws? So first, let's just start with the red uh, triangle. It's saying that one is joined uh, by even numbered points and one by odd numbered points. So if we start with one, then five and three, so this is one triangle. Let's take the green color. So it will be 2, 4 and 6. So if we see the formation of the triangles, uh, option E is my answer. If you see, uh, I have taken the reverse colors. But then if you see, this is how these triangles are formed. So my answer is option Let's read question number two. Eileen rode around five bears as shown. Which bears did Eileen row around in an anti-clockwise direction? Now, this is the, the joint. And if you see, he's, it's going from here in this direction. And if you see, if you follow this, then for one, it is going in this direction. So clockwise is the way the clock moves. So clock moves like this, one, two, three, four. And then it goes here, 12 o'clock. Now, anti-clockwise means reverse direction. So it will go like this. The arrow will be like this. In this case, mm -hmm. it will be like this. So clockwise and anti-clockwise. And so let's see. So in case of one, it is going in anti-clockwise and if you follow now two this is going in clockwise direction and then if we follow this and again three is going in anti-clockwise direction four is in clockwise and five is also clockwise so the question is uh, which of them is in anti-clockwise direction so anti-clockwise is number one and number three hence my answer will be again option number e one and three now let's read question number three. Laser beam reflects in mirrors in the way shown in the picture. At which letter will this laser beam end? So let's start from here. So this is the laser beam entering. Then from here, it will go here. Then it will go here. It will go here. It will go here. Then it will go here. Go here. It will go here. Then from here, it will go here. Then here, it will go here. Here, it will go here. And it will end here. So it will end at option B. That will be my answer. Let's read question number four. Sister, cistercian numerals were used in the early 13th century, any integer from 1 to 99 can be represented by a single glyph formed by combining two of the glyphs shown below. Now, most of the kids get confused as to what an integer is. Integer is any positive or negative whole numbers. So that means they are not into decimals or fractions. It's a whole number. Now, the glyph 24 looks like this. So that means this is the 2 and this is the 4. So this is the 2 and this is the 4. And the glyph for 81. So you have an 80 and you have a 1. So 81 looks like this and the glyph for 93 looks like this. What does the glyph 45 look like? That's pretty easy. So you check the 40. And if you see these, you just have like one standing line. So we can straight away. Uh, so now the question is what does the glyph for 45 look like? So you have to see it has to be one standing line. So we can straight away eliminate B and C. Now 40 is here 
and so it is not a covered line. So 40 and 5. So you have a closed triangle on this end. So this is again not the answer. And uh, again, here the triangle is on this side, not on this side. So A is not the answer. My answer will be option number B. Now let's read question number 5. Marbles are sold in packages of 5, 10 or 25. Tom buys exactly 95 marbles. What is the minimum number of packages he could buy? Now they are asking us minimum number of packages. So that means we need to buy, uh, you know, the packs which have the maximum marbles. Now the maximum uh, pack size is 25 marbles. Now if we do 25 times 4, like if you buy 4 packets, then you get 100 marbles. But 100 marbles is not something that we need. We need only 25 marbles. So this combination will not work. So let's look at the other combination. So marbles and packets. So for 25, the least that we can do or the maximum that we can do is three packets. So we will get 75 marbles from here. And so we will need 20 more marbles so we'll go to the next uh, larger number which is 10 and i'll buy two packets so i'll get 20 marbles from here and this will be my 95 marbles so the number of packets that i need to buy is five so my answer will be option b now let's read question number six a b c d is a square with side length of 10 centimeters what is the area of the shaded part? Now, first, let's see what will be area of the square. Area of the square will be side times side, which is 10 times 10. So it will be 100 centimeter square. Now, they're saying what is the area of the shaded part? Now, if we look at it and we just rearrange it, suppose this part, I take it here, right? And I divide the square into equal halves. So this part becomes empty suppose so this becomes empty if i shade it right and we have these two shadings which again if i shift it here so basically half of my square is shaded so <clears throat> area of the shaded part will be half of 100 which will be 50 so my answer will be option c which is 50 centimeter square. Now let's read question number seven. In the garage shown in the picture, vehicles can only move forward or backward, but cannot turn. What is the smallest number of vehicles that can have to be moved for the black car to be able to exit the garage? Now this car needs to move forward. So we need to basically move this car. Now, if you see this, if I move it up now, if you see it is occupying three boxes, one, two, and three. So even if I move it a little up, right, if I move it one step up, then it will still be occupying this box and the car will not be able to move. Now, even if I want to put it down, it can only move one box. So that means now here you have one, two, and three. So that means if I pull this car here, then this car can leave. So that means I need to move this car. So somehow I need to move this car. There was actually a game which is available on Play Store, which is like unblock car. And you get these kind of uh, puzzles there. Now what we will do is this car can move here. So it will be one, two, three boxes. And I'll have these three boxes empty. So this car, which is occupying two boxes, will move a little up. So this box becomes empty. And this is again occupying three boxes. So this car will occupy these three boxes. And this will become empty. So I'll push this car down. So it will occupy these three boxes. And the car will be able to go. So how many vehicles I'll have to uh, move? I'll have to move this car. One, two. And then I'll have to move this one. Three. And I'll have to move this one. So I have to move four vehicles for this black car to move out. So my answer will be option number C, which is four. Now let's read question number eight. Guilia had one long string of spaghetti. She needs to make smaller. 
Every time she breaks one piece of spaghetti, it becomes three pieces as shown in the picture. Which of the following number of pieces could she not get? So like one stick is broken into three pieces. So this vanishes and you have three pieces. So let's just see. For example, if you have, let's just take these three sticks as say, suppose this is my stick, this is my stick. These are these three pieces of stick, right? Now, if I cancel this, if I break this up, I'll get three pieces. If I break this up, I'll get three pieces. If I break this up, I'll get three pieces. So I'm getting nine right now, but nine is not something which is available. So what I do is I again break this piece. So I'll get three more pieces. And if I break this piece, I'll again get three more pieces. So here I have uh, seven pieces plus three plus three, which is 13. So 13 is something which is possible, right? So that's why 13 is not my answer. Now, if we keep continuing, let's take a different color. Okay? Now we got this. Now, if we keep continuing, Let's just erase this and move forward. Now, if you keep, so this was option <clears throat> A. Right now, option B, which is there, which is 17. So now, if I, if I cancel this, then I'll have three more. Right, so I have nine here, nine plus three plus, Three, so which is nine plus six, which is seventy. So this option is also possible. Hence, this is not my answer. Now, if we keep doing like this, suppose let's try uh, the third option. So these are already gone. Now, suppose if I break this up, so I'll get three more. So I'll get three more, <clears throat> and if I cancel this, I'll get three more. So this is nine and this is seven. So nine plus seven and three. So this is 19, but I need a bigger number. So this is seven. And if I cancel this, so I have nine more here. Okay. And nine plus nine is 18. And uh, these are three. So 18 plus three is still 21. So if I cancel this, I have got three more. So which is plus five. So 18 plus five is 23, which is my option D. So that is also possible. Uh, and hence this is, uh, that's not my answer. Now, again, if I continue for say option E, now this is nine and this is nine. And if I cancel this more, then I'll get three more, right? So these are seven. So nine plus nine plus seven, which is 18 plus 5 is 25. So even this is something that I'm able to get. And hence, this is not my answer. So the only option I'm not able to get is option number C. So my answer, which of the following number of pieces would she not get will be uh, option C. Now, let's read question number 9. Bodil rearranges the seven pieces shown to, give, to get the smallest possible 12-digit number. What are the last three digits of this number? Now we have to make the smallest possible number. So the smallest possible number has to be, uh, like one has to be the uh, the starting number. So here the smallest number we have is one. So this becomes my first piece that I need to arrange. So this becomes my first piece. Then we have to arrange them in ascending order. Then the smallest possible number that I have is this is six, this is nine. So the smallest is four. So this will be my second piece. Then the third number that I have is 51. See, if we actually take a 50, if we take a five first and then we take a 51, then it becomes a bigger number. So first I'll take a five and then I'll take a 51. Similarly, I'll take a smaller number here, which is 67.
So I'll take a 67 and then we'll have a 69 and then we'll have a 9. So the number would be 113-455-167699. So they're asking us what are the last three digits of the number. So the last three digits of the number will be option A, which will be 699. Now let's read question number 10. Which of the following fractions of a whole turn should the ferris wheel turn to bring the white pod to the top? So now if you need the white pod to the top of a whole turn, so now how many gondolas are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if we talk about the fraction of probability, uh, we have to select a white gondola. So total white gondolas are 6. And uh, uh, no, we'll not do it through the probability uh, route. Now, if we see that uh, the total number of gondolas that we have are 12. Total gondolas are 12. And what uh, part of the fraction to bring the white pod on the top? So this is my top position. And this is my white gondola. So it just needs to move one place. So it just needs to turn once. And the total number of gondolas are 12. So uh, my answer will be D, which will be 1 over 12. I hope you like my video. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.